Hercules Gomez, he, he managed to come off the bench, play 13 minutes, and once again, with only 13 minutes, scored a goal for Pachuca. So that trend continues for Hercules. Um, not getting maybe as much time as we thought he would so far this season, though. Well, he, he also is just joining a team, that, a team that's consistently one of the top teams. Right. This isn't, so, this isn't all, Puebla. This, right. Yeah, exactly. This is a quality team. So the fact that he came off 13 minutes, and you know, to tell you the truth, I believe he scored in one of the first couple minutes of him joining the team on the field. Yeah. Um, but he, he, this is what he is. He's Mr. Opportunistic. He comes in for very few minutes and still manages to put something on the board. Right. What now, he does. Now let's go through some negatives here. Or I don't know. Maybe you want to call them negatives. Call them whatever the hell you want. But uh, Sasha Kleschen didn't dress for Anderlecht. And, and you know, I have some inside uh information on that and that is that you know basically the managers told Sasha he's going to probably have to wait till next season to get regular mean minutes he's basically on the second or third team um he so he's not even dressing at this point uh, even though he had a pretty good preseason and uh he, he did well in in, in you know uh, some of the cup play that they've had so he's essentially Sasha is going to have to wait till next season then we get into this big News we're hearing about Freddie Adu, who's not even dressing. He must be the most expensive player that Eris uh, Saloniki's ever had that doesn't even dress. But you have some uh, inf inside information on that, on Freddie. Well, I don't, I don't know much about why he's not dressing, except for maybe the fact that Cooper doesn't want him there, um, which was the whole debate in the preseason, in the, before the season even started. But um, apparently uh, Adu is tweeting... He's tweeting again, but he's tweeting oh, that. God. Yeah, he's tweeting that he has some big plans set up and that they're already set in motion and that it's going to happen in a couple of months. So maybe in the January window we're going to see him outside of Greece and maybe even leaving Benfica for good. Um, Back to MLS is my guess. That, 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 that might be the situation here because you know if he can't even find a way on to uh, into his, on the club team in Greece, where, where's he going to go? Yeah, uh, Europe. I mean, and still stand up uh, just as good of a chance. I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I agree. To, to tell you the truth, he might. I mean, he might even struggle. Oh, I guess he won't struggle because we don't have that big of depth here in uh, MLS. But you know, the MLS, MLS isn't that much worse of a league. If not, if not, equal, oh no, it's, it's on, on no, par. no. I mean, it's on par with Greece. Yeah. I mean, that's anybody who thinks it isn't 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 paying attention. Maybe the top teams in Greece. Are better than anything that maybe yep. that we have here. I was giving them the benefit of the doubt on that. But now with the Red Bulls having the arsenal they have and LA Galaxy playing as well as they do, I'm not sure. I think those two teams would be at the top of the Greek well, table. Even, even with uh, how Real Salt Lake's playing and uh, even the Columbus Crew. Just oh yeah, Real Salt Lake's just impressive. They have very. I mean, I think a a, a lot of average players that in that system play incredibly well together. Um, but, you know, Brett, if I went down the line of the number of players that did not dress or did not play for the United States or for the Americans' uh, side of things, it would be sort of depressing. So I'm not going to do it because there's a lot of them. Uh, you know, Ricardo Clark, Daniel Williams with uh, Freiburg. I'm not going to go down the whole list, but I'm going to mention a few of them. The good news is Carlos Bocanegra is playing regular, uh, regularly in France again. But then we get to... Um, you know, somebody like Jonathan Spector. And I bring Jonathan Spector up because supposedly uh, the word is he is so out of favor with Avram Grant at West Ham that he has no prospect of starting a game, if even dressing for a game at West Ham for the rest of the season. Looks dire for Jonathan Spector. And this is kind I, of. I don't, it, I don't know what to really say to that because it's true. Uh, he does seem sort of out of favor, and you know what to tell you the truth is, uh, his play uh, at the end of last season certainly didn't help him. No, it didn't. The fact that he didn't get any uh, any time during the World Cup certainly didn't help him. No, and he's coming back to a team that is going to move on without move on without him yep. in the long run. He, I mean, 
he come come winter, come next uh, summer, he might have to be looking for a new team. You know, and to tell you the truth, they might try to shop him out in the winter. Maybe the word is defensive liability, um, which is 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 too bad because there was a time uh, for many years that he was considered a pretty good prospect coming up. He's still a young kid too, um, but you know, as far as Avram Grant's concerned, he is not. Um, He's too big of a liability to throw out on the field on the wing. So, oh well. All right. But uh, on top of that, um, we're going to talk about another guy playing in the championship, Mike Grella. Uh, he plays for Leeds United, or is, at least he's on the team. He doesn't yes. play ever. Um, but he has not been dressing. Um, Leeds United has been trying to shop this guy out. They are trying desperately to even uh, loan him out but as the manager grayson has said and he's he said uh, up front i'm very frustrated um because i've been trying to loan mike grella out and he does not want to be loaned out uh he does not want to play levels any further down than he is now in the championship what am i supposed to do with this kid um so there's a big level uh, of frustration in fact uh uh, somebody actually mentioned, there's a, a writer, a reader named AFC who said the following, Grella can't even make the bench. The teams who offered to take him offered short loans, so I'm sure it would have included a recall clause. The question is, where does Grella go from here? He, does, he's, he can't even get playing time for Leeds, and I can tell you that a championship team will take anybody they can find who can play. So this is this goes beyond uh, uh, emotion and conflict and whatever. This is actually, you know, Mike Grella saying, I'm better and I should be playing. And since I'm not playing, I'm going to go somewhere else. But guess what? I don't want to play any any lower level than I'm playing now because I'm too good. Yeah, you know, he's, he's really digging himself a hole here because he's going. He's, he's not going to play the, the rest of the season for Leeds unless there's some serious injury cases. Uh it's the frustration is going to take a toll. He's going to end his contract with no serious game, playing time. Yep. And he's going to he's basically going to reach out for anybody who's going to offer a trial, whether or not he gets any. Um, I mean, he should have taken the loans. Yes, it's yes, it's League Two. Yes, it's League One. It's lower than where you're at right now. But you know what? You're not that good to say. You know what? I deserve better. Yeah. So I yeah. mean, he, he needs he needed to take those loans. He needed to buckle down and get playing time and help build a fucking career for him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there is another guy who said his name's Tian Nelson. And he said, I, "I hope to see a few Yanks get moves to bigger clubs in January. Some players are really making a case for big transfers, while others just need to get playing time and should go to a more suitable club or league." If you ask me. Now, I don't know what TN um, Nelson's watching, but I don't see any players right now uh, moving to bigger clubs. Let's look at let's look at Anyewu. Uh AC Milan has said to Anyewu, "Listen, we want to loan you out." Uh Gooch said, "No, I want to fight for a spot on AC Milan. I don't want to be loaned out." He refused to be loaned out. Um you know what? Move to bigger clubs if you want to, but just expect to sit your ass on the bench the way Gucci is sitting his ass on the bench right now with no hope of getting any playing time. Period. That's what it's looking like. Here's my example for this because I completely agree with you. Um, here's Stuart Holden playing 90 minutes every game for Bolton, and he's playing in you know arguably the best league in the world. So he's playing against the best players worldwide. Right. And he's consistently getting playing them. Is Bolton the top team in the world? No, they're not. They're not. But he, so you know, what? Yeah. If Manchester United came knocking on his door, I if I was if I was Stewart's agent, I would be like, no. No. -uh. Don't take that up because you're gonna ride pine and you're you might find some playing time here and there. It would be a stretch to say that. Is, but you know what? Yeah. He's, he's doing well. He's excelling at the team he's at. It's not the, it's not the wor a world beater, right. but hell, he's doing well for himself. Now, if Gooch was playing at Wolves or Bolton or some other lower team in the EPL, would he be getting some playing time? 
yeah, I think he would. But if Stuart Holden moves to AC Milan, he's not getting any playing time either. So this was just a a, uh, a pipe dream on Gucci's. Uh, it, first of all, for AC Milan, it was a marketing move in my in my eyes to to bring Gucci to the team. Maybe they saw some potential because Gucci has played well in Belgium. But after that injury, you know, it is hard to see Gucci doing much of anything. Um, with AC Milan, he he should have taken a loan. He should have gone to Genoa. He should have gone to uh, uh, all the other options supposedly that were being shopped for him that he refused and said no, no, no. I want to fight for a spot. Well, guess what, Gooch, you're not even dressing for AC Milan. You're not even on the bench. You're not even an option. So sometimes players can make moves that are detrimental to their development. And here is a optimum. Case in point for Gooch. Here, yeah, here's my thing with Gooch. Is he a, is he a uh, bad defender? No, he's not. He nope. has a lot of quality attributes that a lot of teams are looking for. The problem is, is that he joined up with AC Milan. And you know what? AC Milan and all the top teams around the world have the money and have the prestige to go out and shop around for the best of the best. So he is facing. Ultimately, he is facing in six of six top center backs. And yep. He's got to be on his A game. Whereas if he went to a lower team, and he, even if he stayed in Syria, if he went to a lower team in Syria, he might only be competing against two or three decent, you know, center backs. You know, right. so at least that he would stand a chance here. Yeah. It's not that he's a bad defender, but the fact is, is that if you're not on your game 99 percent of the time, you're not going to upseat the current starters. And you really won't. And 100 percent physically fit and healthy. We can't uh, underestimate that since his injury, um, because even a lot of us during the World Cup were saying, you know what, it's time to pull Gooch. He does not look 100% to me. He looks like he's still recovering mentally from the combat of dealing with such a horrendous knee injury. When that, when that sucker pops, I can tell you, I've had it pop. That mentality, the, the mentality that you can do whatever you want with your legs, leaves you. So, anyhow, Brett, we're out of time. Uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us at The Straight Red Card. I'm Derek Ritchie. That was Brett Corbett, and we'll see you next time on The Straight Red Card.